Hi, Assalamualaikum. Okay, today Umi going to show you tutorial on the topic 9. Okay, so let's do the first question. So, this is 5 marks question. So, usually kalau 5 marks ni, dia tak ada uh, lukis graph. Okay, so let's go into the detail. So, it's about a machine filling water. And then, dia bagi information a mean of 5 liter. Okay, dia ada bagi mean and dia bagi standard deviation ataupun sigma 0.06 liter. And then, dia bagi tahu number of sample is 36. Determine the control limit that will include the 98%. Okay, confident intervals. Answer must be in 3 decimal point. Okay, check. Sometimes they ask for 2, sometimes they ask for 3. So, this one is 3 decimal po point at the place. And then, after you get the control Limit, then you check whether this data is with inside or outside the control limit. Okay, and then we need to justify is it the process is in control or not. Okay, first we want to know what type of chart is this. Okay, look at the sampling. Sampling here is talking about uh, little. Okay, is it variable sampling or attribute sampling? We know the variable must have unit and measurable. So, they have unit, yes, liter. And it's measurable, yes. And attributes is for defect. Okay, you're counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's no unit for attributes. So, we know that it's liter. So, it, it must be measurable. So, these are the variable sampling. And the control chart and also the formula we're going to use is the X bar chart. And for X bar chart, we need to find X bar bar. So, X bar bar here is 5 liter. And then the sigma is 0 0.06 liter. Okay. And it's 36. Okay. And we need to find the 98% confidence interval in Z table. Okay. Uh, or normal table. We done this in the chapter or topic 5. Remember, we do the time study. So, we need to find the Z value. Okay, remember 3 decimal point. Okay, so the information we have here is X bar bar, 5 liter, sigma is 0 0.06 liter, and is 36. First step is to find the Z in the normal table, okay, for 98%. Remember, we have done this in the chapter or topic 5. So, these are the Z table. And if you don't remember, please refer to the video that I attached in the Google Classroom. Okay, how to do this? Okay, 0 0.98 divided by 2. We get 0 0.49. And then you find 0 0.49 or nearer to 0 0.49. So, I will choose this one. Okay, so how to, to get the Z value? So, 2.3 here and then up here is 0 0.0. 3. So, we add 2.3 plus 0 0.03, you get 2.33. You need to do this for one mark, okay? If you don't do this, so you're missing one mark. So, these are the formula for the X bar chart, upper control limit. Okay, X bar bar plus Z we have already. Sigma we have here. And then N we have this 36. So, you plug in all the values, so you will get 5.023 liter. Okay. You need to do to put the uh, unit here. Okay. So remember 3 decimal point. And for the lower control limit is you change the plus into minus. So you plug in all the information here and then you will get 4.977 liter. Okay. If you don't uh, put the unit, you will uh, lose some marks here. So we have already the control limit. Next. Okay, give this sample means of 5.024, 5.001, 4.998, 5.002, 4.976 and 4.99. Whether it's in control or not. So, we check in the range here. So, make sure that this number fall in the range. If not, if outside of the 5.023 or outside the 4.977, it will consider as uh, not in control. Okay, let's look at 5.024. So, it's already outside the UCL, upper control limit. Okay, for this one, it's 
in the control limit. Okay. 4.998 is inside the control limit. And then 5.002 is inside control limit. But 4.976 is outside here. So it's not. And 4.99 is in here. So we know that 2 of the uh, sample mean is outside the upper control limit and lower control limit. So our conclusion is the process is not in control. Why? Because we need to justify the answer. There are two sample means outside the control limit. Okay. So you get five points. Okay. Let's do for the second question. Okay. Let's look at the first thing we need to know what type of chart that we need to use and also what information given. So we have here talking about this uh, kettlebell and they give us the standard deviation is the sigma 0 0.15 then the average weight of the 9 kettlebell 9 so n is 9 have been set for 24 days. Okay so they give us the average so this one is the x bar for 24 days okay we need to determine what type of chart is this because we need to construct okay see this is the 10 marks question construct you need to draw okay and then check two decimal point and then we need to determine the control chart values if they're using three standard deviations so it means that z equal to three and this one, the Z is we need to find because they want at 96.6% confident intervals. And then we need to compare these two, okay? The first step is what type of chart going to be? Is it variable sampling or attribute sampling? So we know that the first we need to check half unit, yes, kg. Is it measurable? Yes, by weight. So what type of chart is going to be? So it's going to be X bar chart. Okay, so for X bar chart, Okay, we need to do to the formula going to use x bar bar. So first we need to find the x sum of x bar. So sum of x bar, you have to sum all of this average. We have 2.8, 2 2.8. And then to find x bar bar, we have to divide the sum of x bar with 24 because we have 24 days. So total going to be 11.78 kg. Okay, and then we need to find the Z for 96.6, okay? So, from the normal table, okay, remember, I show you uh, before. So, uh, I will cut short here. So, what I found in the Z table, so 0 0.966 divided by 2, I get 2.12. Okay, you need to show this calculation to get 1 point. Then, these are the formula for... UCL, so X bar bar plus Z, okay. We have the sigma here and we have N here, 9. So we have 11.89 kg. Remember, you need to put the unit. So for LCL, you just change this one to minus, okay. Plug in all the numbers and then you get 11.67 kg. Okay, now you need to construct a control chart. We know it's going to be X bar chart. So we have the CL, control limit, we have the UCL, and then we have the LCL. So let's construct the control chart. So what we need here is the, this represents the uh, average, okay? So it's going to be range of this, what is the maximum and minimum. And control, uh, the, the yellow one is the control limit or the average. X bar bar, 11.78. And then we have the upper control limit, 11.89. And then we have the lower control limit, 11.67. So what to plot in here? We have to plot the average. So for the first one is 12.4. So 12.4. Day 2 is 12. So day 2, okay. So day 2 here, 12. Okay, and so on. And then let's do... At, let's take a look at the last point is 24 at 12.2 so 24 12.2 is around here okay so what can you conclude from this okay because we want to know whether it's in control or not so definitely is not in control because it already exceed the 
upper control limit also lower control limit okay next let's do the second part determine the control chart values if three standard deviation are used instead of the uh, 96.6 right so we know that x bar bar is 11.78 kg so these are the same so we change the z so z now is 3 they give us 3 so we just uh, plug in into the formula so we change this with 3 so we have 11.93 kg and then for the lower control limit we have 11.73 kg okay so we have the new range here Alright, we need to compare or to relate these two values. The first one, when using 96.6, uh, .6, we get this range. And when we use Z equal to 3, we get this range. And actually, Z equal to 3 is what is the confidence interval. So, we have to go to normal table. So, now we are doing it reversely. So, Z equal to 3. So, Z equal to 3 here. Okay. 0.59. 865 so this this time we going to look to find the confidence intervals so we times 2 and we get 0 0.9973 and then we convert to percentage it going to be 99.73 percent so this one is for the 99.6 percent so what we can say here is that 99.73 percent for z equal to 3 give us wider contour range compared to the 96.6 percent so when we have a wider control range a uh, control limit it means that less average weight of kettlebells here are outside the limit because the limit have been uh, expand okay all right so you get 10 marks for all this step okay let's look at the third one okay so first we look at the question and they give a sample for 10 sample and look at the unit. Do they have any unit? Okay, let's check. Okay, it's about a tire. Okay, tire manufacturer. And then they talk about defect. Okay. In order to evaluate the magnitude of the problem, production engineer selected 10 random samples of 20 units each. So, it means that every sample have 20 units. Okay. And the number of fraction defective as shown in the table. So we need to construct. Construct means that we need to draw. Okay. A control chart using 95% confidence interval. And based on the graph, we need to conclude the finding. What type of chart is this one? Okay, first we need to know whether it's variable sampling or attribute sampling. Okay. It's a fraction of defective. No unit, no, there's no unit for this one. There's no kilogram, liter, meter, or so on. So it's not measurable. So it must be attributes because they're using the defect. So we know that it's going to be a P chart. Okay, let's start to do some calculation. So we know that N is 20 because uh, each uh, 10 random sample have 20 unit for inspection. So we need to find the number of defect. Okay, how to find the number of defect? Okay, so you need to time with the number of unit in each sample. For sample 1, they have 0 0.05 defect, fractional defective. So the number of defect for sample 1 is 0 0.05 times 20. So you have 1. So you have to do for all the sample in which you have to time the fraction defective to 20. Okay, so then you need to sum all the number of defects so you sum number of defect here 1 plus 3 and so on you get 18 so these are the formula of the uh, p chart is different from the x bar chart so the first one you need to find the p bar so the p bar is total number of defective we know that's 18 and then the total number of observation is the number of sample 10 times the uh, the number of inspection in which 20 so 10 times 20 you get 0 0.09 okay these are the central control limit N next you need to find s so these are the formula for s so p bar we have already calculated okay 
And then n, we know it's 20, so we square root, so we get 0 0.06. Okay, there's no unit here, okay? And then for 95 confident interval, find in the normal table again. I show you the, the answer only. So 0 0.95 divided by 2, and then I get 1.96. So these are the formula for the upper control limit, p bar plus z times s. So we have the information, p bar, we have s, we have z, so it's going to be 0 0.21. And then for the lower control limit, it's uh, changed to minus, okay, so it becomes negative 0 0.0276, remember, in the control chart, we don't have a negative, so we need to convert to 0. So now, we need to plot the graph, so we need to check, we have the p bar, we have the UCL, and then we have the Oh, sorry, this is the LCL, yeah? So, I need to change this to LCL. So, we have all the information and then uh, this is LCL, yeah? We need to change this. So, we need to, to plot CL is the 0 0.09, is the P bar. The upper control limit is 0 0.21 and the lower control limit is LCL is 0. So, what to plot inside here? We need to plot the fraction defective. So, for example, sample 1, 0 0.05. So, sample 1, 0 0.05. Okay. These are the... So, these are the fraction defective. Okay. So, let's say, for example, sample 10, 0 0.05. So, sample 10, 0 0.05. So, you have to plot how many? 10 data here. Okay. So, what you can co conclude from here? Based on the plotted graph, we conclude that all the defective... A fraction defective are within the control limits. Okay, nothing exit here and nothing below here. Okay, so zero is okay, no problem, because in the defect, the zero defect is the best. Okay, for X bar chart, we don't want anything uh, beyond UCL and below LCL. So for P chart, we like to have zero defect. Okay, so thus we can conclude that this process is in control. Okay, so I have shown you, uh, I think about three examples. So if you have, I think it can um, give you idea how to construct the X bar chart and also the P chart and how to differentiate between variable sampling and also attribute sampling. All right, so thank you very much.